and we are live right welcome everybody to our regular tuesday uh tat chat nearly forgot what it was called a little bit earlier this week because there's some football game or other on i don't know something important apparently so we thought we'd go on a bit earlier so we don't clash with the uh, beginning of that game and we thought we'd have a um widen our spread a bit and get some guests in so i want to let me go down the line darren how are you doing mate not too bad, thank you. Not too bad until so getting busy. Uh, I've had a really, really busy weekend. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been doing. How about you guys? Busy with work or busy other things? Uh, just purely work. I mean, as, as you know, I picked up those CDs on Friday. Yeah. Um, and they've been, they've taken quite a bit of time to go through. Uh, then I had like 30 plus orders went out this morning, which I had to pack last night. Uh, I, they were auctions, not right now. So. <laughs> And uh, and obviously I've been doing Amazon FBA today as well. So yeah, just really tired and busy. <laughs> nice one. And then we've got Tom who's dipped in. You're not sure how long you can stick around, but good to see you, mate. Yeah, yeah. I, well, you see, I've got to, I've got to go and play on Fortnite. I've, I'm getting withdrawal <laughs> symptoms. So uh, yeah, I just need to play, man. I just need to play. And I've got my uh, Zahir hat on because he <laughs> loves his haters. Oh, I, I like the cap. Actually, it is really cool. I'm gonna have to take it off though because my head's blinking boiling so uh, yeah yeah is it roasting everywhere up and down the country because here it is unbearable i mean i like the heat i'm not i don't want to sound like i'm complaining but man i can't really work in this it, it is really hot yeah it is yeah. really, how are you, really how are you doing so you're right yeah. it's crazy um i like you i'm not complaining because it's the best spell of weather i can remember in in years um so i'm i'm enjoying it but i've been drinking so much water so i think that's a good thing um like i've, I've been filling bottles and putting them in the fridge and or freezer and yeah this I'm, I'm on a hot cup of tea well technically that's the right thing to do i can't drink hot technically tea. no uh, apparently like, i think i learned this at school years ago in some science lesson that but to regulate your temperature tom's actually doing the best thing because he's introducing a hot liquid to his body his body's going to regulate temperature down more efficiently than when if you put something cold in so if i'm drinking this water it's ice cold my body's actually going to do its best to bring my core temperature up um, to back if I no. drink the hot tea right now, I'll be sweating. No, you wouldn't. I tried it. <laughs> I, no, it's wrong. It must have been something else. Yeah, Betty swallowed. <laughs> I heard it at school, and I'm sticking by it. I'm not sure if it was a teacher that said it, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the word of it. <laughs> anyway, welcome, of welcome, everybody. If you are joining us live, um, if you're new here, we are resellers. Uh, all of us here, actually, are full-time resellers. We buy and sell stuff. On the internet and talk about it on youtube um and there is a live side chat um so yeah pop in and say hello we don't particularly have a subject we just thought we'd get a, a bunch of us together and have a chat so beyond that it's up to you guys can i just point out lauren anderson's comment watching from sunny jamaica wow oh, imagine that sitting on the beach with a rum and coke yeah there's someone else from vegas as well wow Crazy. Only a week till I go to the states. Can't wait. Uh, you must be in. You must be in like kind of cruise control now. Surely. I can't. Or, or are you different? I can't like concentrate. I, I thought it was the weather, but I think half yeah. my brain is on the plane anyway. Yeah. If I was like a week away, I think I'd be doing even less work. Oh, than, yeah. I just. Yeah. I'd be in shutdown. I'd just be out shopping for the holiday or whatever. I don't know. Oh, I didn't think that was possible, Zahir. I think it is. <laughs> I think I can, I can manage it. Yeah. I can amaze. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's doable. Sorry. Let me say a few quick hellos. Uh, I think Pete was in first. Yep. Um, then we got some reseller gaming. I don't know. What's that oh, about? Some dodgy folk. Some proper dodgy folk in the chat, definitely. Um, for those of you that don't know, that's Tom's other channel uh, where it's all about the Fortnite. Yep. Oh, hang on. Window problems. So, yeah, lots of people popping in. We've got Stephen Jones, uh, Richard Hale, Kay, hi there. Heather, the treasure pirate. Scroll down. I can't say hello to everyone. We'll be here all day. George Ross, Bumblebee, Kirsten's in. Ash is so, in. Yeah. Oh, Ash, another Fortnite addict. I'm still resisting, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not coming over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> Which Andrea is quite relieved about, actually. 
Oh, and Darren, you're still on the Fortnite thing, aren't you? You're quite... quite I, I am, yeah. yeah nah, it's a bit of a lightweight, is Darren. I don't see him, don't see him online as much as, as, as we should, but, you know. Some of us don't need the practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, burn. That is true. Hold on, there's a World Cup joke in the side chat from Jennifer. Uh, why did the World Cup trophy cross the road? Don't know. Uh, because it was coming home. That's June, uh, isn't it? That's, that's finished us off. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got a chance, I suppose. We're still in it. So, yeah. um, Kirsten asks, is she the only person who knows nothing about Fortnite? Quite possibly. <laughs> Quite possibly. It's got, got to be in the minority. You've got to be in the minority now. I must admit, it's mad how that game has properly exploded worldwide. Well, you'll either know about it um, as a game, or you'll know about it from like the media coverage. In which case, you'll think it um, it's like some highly addictive, um, you know, thing. And it's like actually, it's n this is no different to any other video game. And like me, like the way I've been playing it, like a lot of people have been saying, I'm kind of playing it a lot. This is how I normally used to play games, and that's why I love it. Like when Halo Three was out, this is what I was doing. Um, when Gears of War was out, this is what I was doing. Like you know, coming home from work, I literally come home from work and sit down in front and of the computer and just play for hours on end, and then fall asleep with like an apple pie, and you know, and then Beck would take an embarrassing photo to show what I'd become. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think though, because it's really captured the worldwide imagination, it, it's it's bigger than anything I've seen before in that sense. And people yeah. are jumping on because of the yeah. hype, and it's like just well, that's insane. the thing. You, like you know, the media coverage, even when it's not positive, it's still just helping, really, isn't it? And then you know, it, it is yeah, it is immensely popular. Um, so brilliant marketing in the sense as well and they're releasing content where you can now just sort of muck about in there and it's not so serious which will just only just generate so much more money for them yeah it's a cash cow now they're going to ride that until it until it <laughs> until the legs fall off aren't they and why not why wouldn't you tracy says fight the urge nick fight yeah and Nick, Nick's, you know, you're pretty good with um staying out of this aren't you at the yeah. moment yeah I think I spoke to you. I mean, in the nineties, I was proper like sort of eight to ten hours a day on games if I could possibly. But yeah. I, I, don't, I don't you know. might you might do it again. That's the thing. You might surprise yourself and do I don't it again. Lose, lose myself down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Mario Kart's enough for me still. <laughs> right. Let me just scroll down. Get to the end. So I was going to ask you actually, Dan, about that massive uh, CD haul. You reckon you picked that up for free? How did you stumble across that then? Well, it was a local charity shop that me and Phoebe go in quite often. And uh, it was basically a notice up near the CDs that said all CDs and all records completely free. Uh, and we both gave each other that look of we're going to take the lot, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I know that. We don't have enough space. <laughs> Um, what were they like when you suggested that you, that you clear the whole shop, though? Were they fine with that? He was pretty happy about that because he said the reason why they do it is, like, now and again they just want rid of the whole lot because they're ones that they've seen over and over again just sit there for weeks or months. And they get a fresh batch in, and whenever they blend it in with the old batch, people assume that there's nothing new there, so they don't even look. So he said now and again we just clear the whole lot, and then people know that it's all fresh CDs there waiting to be looked at again. And I just thought, it's probably, a, you know, CDs, as you know, are kind of hit and miss. But when they're free, you may as well go for them. So, so how, many copies, just of, thousands in how many copies of the, the Hearsay album do you have? And how many copies of Travis, the man who, and Britney Spears? <laughs> Travis, the man who I had seven copies of. Yeah. <laughs> Every charity shop. Yeah. The, yeah. the worst had to be Ron and Keaton. It was like a red uh, cover. And there was a, literally about 20 of those. Yeah. Nobody yeah. wanted them. <laughs> Even Magpie went, no, nah, we're all right, thanks. We've got know, enough. Know, they're, they're so picky, aren't they? And I can understand why. You've got seven. Imagine how many Magpie have got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, but yeah, it was obviously, it's, I mean, I, we, I got them Friday and it took me all, all night Friday, all day Saturday, and they were all sorted by Sunday. So 
pretty good, but it took a, it took a fair amount of doing. To that shows a lot of diligence, to be honest, because that that's actually so impressive and and <laughs> something that's no, because it's something that that people looking to get into halls should bear in mind because i think it's quite attractive to hear you know for to a lot of people when when you th they see like resellers on youtube sharing or, or on instagram or facebook sharing like a haul it's kind of an attractive thing isn't it like, look i got this all this stuff yeah. and, t and, and the more you buy or get the better the value tends to be and obviously you can't get much better than free right well, but but to, to actually have the diligence to to deal with it and not just pilot somewhere or or let the work spread out to such a long amount period of time that it becomes less worthwhile that's actually quite like you know an important thing to to do and you know credit to you for doing that to be honest yeah yeah exactly and it, i knew it was one of the things that when i picked them up i didn't want them hanging around for ages because seeing piles of these cds would have just put me so down if they're still there after a month you know and me, me and phoebe was just sitting there friday just scanning them all in and uh, it was strange because we were so happy even when one flashed up as like 5p we were like yes making money <laughs> you know i've never been so happy to make 5p on a cd before you know and then you get some that's like a pound 50 and you think i'm gonna see how much amazon's selling that for yeah if they're paying a pound 50 how, how much are, you know is it going for on amazon yeah. so yeah it was quite good in the end and we, we did pretty well out of it so you must have had a, a fair couple of hundred that, that even the uh, the music buyers wouldn't take. So are they going to, back to charity? What have you decided to do, to do with the utter crap that nobody wants? I decided to just bundle it as a huge, there's like three or four hundred uh, that are just no good at all. Um, and I've bundled them and I'm just going to out on £10 auction starting price. What they go for is what they go for. Fair enough. Just, just to clear them, you know. And I, I didn't think it was right me taking them back to the same charity shop. Well, so no, not the same one. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> good much. Here you go, mate. Have the crap back. Yeah, have the crap back. <laughs> yeah. um, no, that's a good shout, really, because, uh, you know, another reseller or a boot sale or something for a tenner, they'll take a chance, won't they? And good luck to them. So, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Oh, hang on. I've just noticed I've got a super chat sitting there. Bear with. Let me scroll down. Yeah, there's one of Claire. Yeah. Claire and Leary yeah. sell. Wow, thank you guys. They've super chatted five pounds. They say hi all. Lovely to see you all. Can you mention the Chesterfield meetup, 25th of August, for anyone wanting to come along? And the sticky stock swap. The sticky stock swap is news to me. Uh, the Chesterfield meetup. Yeah. Now Claire and Leah are, or Leah, I think it is, is organising a meetup. Um, yeah. You know, probably know more about it, Tom. Like, yeah, like yeah. I've, uh, she, she's messaged me about it, and I'm currently trying to organise a like an articulated lorry to take my sticky stock down with, just sort of back it up, and you know, one of those tip trucks, <laughs> and just tip it into the venue, and then just do one. Um, that, that's what I'm planning at the moment. Um, What's the sticky stock idea then? It basically it takes stuff. I think that you've had a while or you can't sell and you swap it with someone else i, th I think that's the, the thing there was a post in the chat chat about it oh okay i must have missed that yeah i think it was something like that yeah i think there are feel free leah to to keep posting in the chat chat and promote it on there that's not a problem at all uh if we can get up i will do uh really not sure yet all we can think about is florida at the minute so i'm not really thinking beyond that yeah it's but, about yeah. half an hour from me so uh, there might be space for you to stay if need be if, if ciders are needed to be drunk, but I'm not 100% sure if I can make it yet either. So, Okay, we'll work it out near the time. Have I was going to ask... You, are you on the case with this to here? Um, I have seen it. I'm not sure yet either because we've got time um, constraints, to be honest. So okay. I have to, have to see. But yeah, that sounds like a great idea and hopefully that will get a lot of support. Um, Peter asks, any Spice Girls CDs, Darren? Yeah, quite a few. <laughs> I don't know if Pete's asking for himself. He might, he might want a couple. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Darren, did you find when you were do, dealing with magpies, something I found, and all of the ones, the price varied depending on how you scanned it in. So if you got a full basket, sometimes they offered you less money. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. I, I actually had a glitch where it scanned the same CD in four times. Um, as you know, I only accept one... Of, you know, one copy of everything, but every single price it had scanned was different. It ranged from 16 pence to 50 pence, but for the same CD. So that was quite an interesting one. It's like it's random. What what scans at a time is kind of what you get, you know. There was a period of time with 
Magpie, I'm pretty sure it was, where the first 10 would give you reasonable money. Yeah. For rubbish, like 20p, 30p. After the 10th one, it would be a penny. Yeah. And it would be like, what? Even something half decent. It was really weird. I don't know what they were playing at that point. Yeah, it getting, it, getting it over that minimum amount was really difficult. I don't know if it's still the case, but it was, say you've got a load of CDs, particularly, like it once, I think it's over 10 or something. Yeah, they drop it to 5p. And then it's like, well, how am I going to get over a five rear? But if you did it in empty baskets, it would add, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I had to spread out my few decent things that were worth sending in that weren't worth me reselling for whatever reason. And then kind of somehow budget up to 10 pounds. It was a lot of fiddling around. It wasn't, necessarily worth it a lot of the time but i found as if it were better on price but they would take way less yeah so i yeah. had to mix and match i'm sure darren you found this as well yeah scan yeah, them in a couple and see absolutely yeah i mean i actually got more money from zip it for less cds yeah than what i got magpie so yeah but like you said zip it was often a pound plus per cd and yet magpie i think only had two that they were willing to pay over a pound for so yeah and they also, they're both taking books as well. So it's worth scanning a handful of books. So I, I found a couple that were worth sending up recently that I wouldn't have imagined would be. So it's worth scanning a few. Yeah. And ones that weren't, didn't seem to be worth a great deal on Amazon. It's a really weird system. I don't know how they work it. Yeah. Yeah, we buy books as well, but they're, they're, I think their minimums are tenor, so it's quite difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I used them once, I think. They were super picky. Mm. They were taking hardly anything. Very, very picky. There's another one as well I use. Um... Someone's asking what's happened to Ben Fitzpatrick. He hasn't uploaded in ages. I haven't spoken to him for a while, so I don't know. I would imagine he's just super busy knowing Ben. Um, don't know. I mean, we just squeeze YouTube in around our lives, so it's not always the priority. Uh, but, yeah, I think he's okay. I'll have to message him. Uh, the other ones is We Buy Games and Zapper as well, and and Disc Flipper, some of the ones. No, I, I haven't used those, I don't think. Zip, Zip It and Magpie tends to be my go-tos. Yeah, I've used Zapper before. They were actually pretty decent. Yeah. But again, you've got to balance it with how much time are you taking trying to get the optimal result, but then you've wasted like 20 quids worth of your own time doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to keep track of that, definitely, when you're, when you're just... I mean, at the end of the day, you guys, when you're sending that stuff in, it is literally dregs, isn't it? That you're just... You know, it's a it's a good way of getting rid of some some dregs that uh, that otherwise, I mean, potentially, I suppose you could car boot that stuff as well, maybe. But there's no guarantee that someone's going to come along and even pay 10p at a car boot because there's so much choice um, for that kind of stuff. Media at car boots. I mean, we all see it now. You go to a car boot. So at the end of Blind the car boot, every store has a box of CDs still sat there. Yeah, and I had a, I was chatting with Andrew a while back. I'm, I feel like just getting a massive one of those pull along trolleys and go around at the end of the car boot and say, "I'll buy all of your media at like a penny a pop or something," and then just cart it all home in a van and sell it off to Magpie and Ziffit and that. But I can't be asked. <laughs> That's quite like a lot of work, mate. Yeah, but the thing is, we've all found this, and as Darren was saying, there's always that ten, twenty, thirty gems in there that are worth five or each. So if you just make your money sending the bulk off and then cream off this, this good stuff and make your real profit, I don't know. thing is, I love messing about with media. I would have been the same as Darren and spent a whole weekend sorting it nonstop because I enjoy that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what are you doing with the, the decent stuff, Darren? Is that going to Amazon mainly? Uh, some of it is, yeah, some of it's going to Amazon. There's a couple of like 15, 20 pound CDs in there. Um, only literally a handful, but uh, yeah, some some of it went to Amazon. Most of it has gone to Magpie and Ziffit. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's also smaller bundles I'm going to put on eBay of say like six or seven albums in one go. But the good thing is because I got them for free, it gives me the luxury to just get anything for them and know it's all profit, which is handy. Because CDs, you know, can be around for quite a while sometimes if you want optimum price. So, yeah, definitely, that they can be a really hard sell. 
Uh, Claren Leoriso actually says, um, question, have you all heard they're phasing the views out on eBay? Uh, Karen asked on the phone and they said they were canning it. I didn't know that. Oh, that's, that a, it, yeah. that's a good tool to use to judge, you know, popularity mm. of listing. I heard something about it being only for individual items. So if you're just listing a one-off item, you won't get views. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm keen on the idea, but they are i guess we just have to go along with it so uh, have you guys seen that thing as well where it's like um they would i can't remember what it is but it's some, i saw someone post in one of the groups where like if they don't sell you if you don't sell your item it automatically gets reduced in price until it sells uh, it's it's like automatically turned on. I'll find the thing. Well, I mean, I know Amazon do s similar stuff where they're they're constantly sending me emails saying that I'm not cheap on X, Y, or Z, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I know I'm not cheap on X, Y, or Z. Thanks, but you know, they constantly send me these emails to to reprice. And I think eBay are implementing very similar ideas because they now have that um, section in your um, seller dashboard where they tell you like recommended prices for your stuff um you know they're, they're like increase your sales by pricing more competitively and they'll, and they'll tell me that i've got like 800 underperforming listings yeah. um because yeah. like the stuff i sell is not you know it, well, it, obviously their their algorithm doesn't know how to, swear, to the software yeah. is so it's so yeah. much because the stuff the prices they're finding to compare with sometimes yeah, yeah they are wrong yeah like they they're, they're going to tell me that I should be selling stuff for really cheap and it will suddenly sell whereas I know the stuff I'm selling is slow selling you know it's not every day that someone needs thunder tiger part pd 1623 rear drive shaft for a car that went out of production 10 years ago you know That's it's not that. it's not often that happens so yeah. it feels reducing like the price is not going to suddenly make people you know you're not going to suddenly go oh Wow, that's it's cheap enough for me to just buy it. You know, what are you gonna do with it? You know. <laughs> exactly. And it feels like eBay's coming in and telling you how to how to run your business. And it, and mm -hmm. I find that annoying. So yeah. what what have you heard then, Tom, that they're yeah. gonna yeah. force the that Amazon thing as well? Sometimes that applies to things that you've already sold before and you've got no inventory of, and it's saying reduce your price now, you know, you're not competitive, and it's like, well, I haven't got any. Yeah, it's so annoying. I get about three. I sold them all at a much higher price. Thanks, Amazon. Yeah, yeah I sold them like, I, yeah, ages ago. But I get like about three messages every morning, about three, four in the morning, notifications on my phone. You're not the best price, and it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. off. Yeah, there's a thing here that says, make sure your item gets sold starting ten days after a listing. We'll lower the price by five percent every five days until your item sells, or in this instance, gets to seventy-eight pounds. We'll notify buyers who show interest each time the price drops. Turn it off anytime by going onto your listing. That's, That's dangerous. dangerous. And then someone in the comments has, has, has put like, it's automatically on unless you um, turn it off. So I don't know. I'm going to have to do some digging on that. Sure. So I don't know if that's like for non-business sellers potentially, or if that's because that sounds like something that's implemented for, you know, like private yeah. sellers. Yeah. yeah. I've not heard anything. I don't like think that. that's a terrible idea as long as you can say yes or no, and you can also set the low point that it would go down to. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because a, a lot of my stuff, I, I pitch here thinking I might sell it here. So if that's going to incrementally come down, and they're going to message everybody who's shown interest that it's been reduced. Yeah. I'd be on board with that. But it's, it's just a repricer, like. basically, isn't it? That's yeah. all that is. That's just a repricer, and they can be, unless you're on top of it, they can be a bit dangerous because you can, if you don't, if you overlook your your settings, or like you said, if you don't put in your, your cutoffs, you know, you could take end up selling something for a lot less than you would have wanted to. Yeah, oh, you have to be on top of it for sure. We've got Joel in the chat saying yes, it is for private sellers. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, everyone is blurry. What in the stream? Is that the same for everyone? Has everyone got that problem? There's not a lot I can do about it though. So. <laughs> yeah, I've been said that I'm really loud, so I've moved my microphone further away in the hope I'm not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Might just be a connection thing. Maybe a lot of people getting on BBC iPlayer or something <laughs> using up all the internet. I don't know. Um, Pete from Alan's World is in. He said, I've seen this before, talking about eBay recommending prices. He said, I tried doing some of eBay 
eBay's advice and not a single sale. But my price, it put my prices back to original price and sold within a week. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to ignore it all. Because <laughs> it doesn't factor in, say, you've got a niche item of some sort. It, it says you're really niche, say, sealed board game. Look at this, like, really tatty common board game that's 99p that we think is the same thing and you should price it as such. Do you know what I mean? It's. Yep. And they don't take into account that you might be targeting the international market and not give a monkeys about other sellers and what their prices are. Totally. Or, you know, all of the stuff that we actually think about because we know how to run our business, hopefully. Yeah, it's all geared towards people selling like stuff like, I'd say, like iPhone cases, charging cables, all stuff like that, real consumer goods. Amazon's just the same. Like, they, they are, all their reporting structure is all based on those people. It's not designed for people who who sell the most random, quirky tat on the internet. No. Um, Crispy's got a good question. He says, anyone use vintage cash cow? And I'll say no, but I've just had a look at it, and, yeah, it just looks like a, um, a, a buying service for your old stuff. I know the guy who started that. His name's Anthony. I used to buy yeah. antiques off him at um, New York Antiques Fair. He's a right Del boy. He's a good bloke, but, yeah, yeah they... they yeah, it's kind of like the cash for gold business. Do you yeah, remember back so, about five years ago when you used to just send gold in the post. So basically, you're going to send them stuff. They're going to offer you a really low amount, and you either take it or yeah, that's it. But but it's different because it's for other things. Value, yeah, this is the difficult thing. Value it, get a fair price for the lot, haggle free, hassle free, or we'll ret oh, so you have to send it to them first, so they yeah. have it, and then the idea is that you don't want it back. If you've sent it to them, totally. That's been going on for years, hasn't it? I remember Andrea's nan. She lives on a like a a park, an old people's sort of park with all homes on it. And there was these dodgy guys that would come round and they'd, they'd leaflet the whole park and they'd say, "Can we come round and look at your valuables?" And then they go in there and basically prey on elderly people and buy all their valuables at a fifth of the price and run away with it. I mean, that's been going on for years, hasn't it? Yeah, nothing, nothing you can do to stop it really. It's just preying on people that don't know what they've got. But then again, in a way, that's what we do. Yeah. So, <laughs> I can't be one to uh, moan about it. That's the thing, isn't it? You know, I mean, like, I haven't spoken to him since he'd set it up, but I know they've really pushed, the, pushed like the advertising on the History Channel, stuff like that, really going for it. So, you can't knock them, someone for trying to make money, but it's that whole ethical thing if they knowing they're knowingly offering a fraction of what it's worth. Yeah, but you're knowingly sending stuff in without bothering to find out what it's worth. I mean, how far do you take it? You know, you're you're you know, if you're if that's your if that's your method of disposing of of stuff that you but own is to send be. it. Yeah. And thankfully, there will always be a large percentage of people who can't be bothered, and yeah. that's there are bread and butter. Yeah. I don't know if you saw when I when I streamed and I shared, I picked up this fabulous backpack thing, which I still haven't listed yet, and I got it for a ten. I'm going to shoot for sixty, seventy, maybe. And the lady said the very words to me, "You're getting this cheap because I can't be bothered to put it on eBay and get a lot more." And I was like, "Thanks," you know what I mean? Because I because I can, yeah. Yeah, and most people are in that category, to be honest. They haven't got the time or the inclination. Can't be bothered to deal with posting it or some. A lot of people don't head. like the. Um, I don't. A lot of people don't like the rules either. You know, they they don't like the. Um, a lot of people like the whole safety aspect that once it's gone, it's gone, cash in hand. Uh, they don't like the. You know, they don't like the the other side of eBay, um, and that's why they don't sell on there. Yeah, and some people have just got di totally different life structures. Maybe they've got a child who's who's having trouble at school, or you know, outside factors that they just haven't got the time to to make ten yeah. quid more, yeah. and they'll let someone else deal with it. Yeah, it's all about headspace and and having that space to think about it and be bothered to do it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Right. Peter Ray says, Nick, I uploaded my latest video. Nice. I'll try and find some time to have a look in. Okay. So I'm gonna briefly talk about the football. Darren, what where would you if you had to if you were a betting man, <laughs> where would you where would you put your money now at this point? 
Oh, are, you, are you following uh, it this time? I would have lost it about three times already if I was a betting man. But uh, anyway, you know what? I really, I really don't know. Maybe Uruguay. Yeah. Uruguay. You know, there's still, the, no, there's still too many teams in there that are better than England, which is a sad thing to say based on facts. You know, it, 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 like everyone's getting excited because Germany's out, you know, um, was it um, Argentina are out, Spain are out. So everyone's getting excited over that. But there are, you know, like you said, Uruguay still in, Belgium still in, Sweden. I, I, I wouldn't put past Sweden to beat us in, an, in a World Cup match. I, I just wouldn't. But, you know, so I'm still firmly, you know, I'm going to watch it. And tonight I hope we win and hope it carries on. But just, people are putting their uh, predictions in. Uh, it's the best chance we're going to have for many years. Put it that I way. So. I think yeah. I'm quite it's excited. the best chance. Uh, yeah. I'm oh, no, oh, sorry, not to mention Brazil are there as well. And they're not messing. You know, after last time, they're not going to mess. Oh, they really screwed up last time. <laughs> yeah, they're not messing this time. Uh, a few predictions coming in. Will you take less England 2-1? Uh, tonight? Um, yeah, uh, tonight. Karin, 3-2 England. I've got a horrible feeling it's going to go to penalties, guys, but there you go. Ugh, you know what I mean? Oh. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be watching it. I'm going to be playing on Fortnite because that is the best time to get a win, I'm thinking. <laughs> That's making me want to get on it as well. That's making me want to just get on it. There's only going to be complete muppets like this guy. Or, no, or they're going to be the most hardcore of the hardcore that don't yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be only the hardcore gamers who can't peel themselves away from yeah. their computer to watch. Who'll, who'll build like the Taj Mahal in front of you for You'll the final two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I might watch it. You not on Z says Ash. Later, not not now. Later, because football's on afterwards. He's playing now. You can't see him. Yeah, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually playing. I'm, I'm not looking at the chat on the other screen. It's. Yeah, it's... <laughs> no, no. I've yeah. not even played today. Not at all. I wouldn't put it past you, Z. Yeah, no, I've not played at all today. Not even seen um anything. Not even the gun. I've, I've been watching streams though. Uh, Sib K, who's going under the moniker of Sydney, Australia right now. God almighty. Says, uh, laugh out loud. We've only won two games and one was Panama, exclamation mark. Can't believe people think we have a chance. Well, we're still in it, so we yeah. kind of effectively have a chance. Yeah. Uh, Blitz, yeah, he's back in England. Uh, Peter's back in Brazil. Claire and Leah, Japan. They're fun to watch. They're out. Japan are out. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Like Belgium beat them three two. I'm behind. But I reckon if imagine if we'd had Japan, I'm not sure. We, I, I I know it sounds so negative, but I'm not sure we would have beaten them. I was kind of glad we didn't have Japan. Yeah. 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 Oh dear. So have you guys been listing match attack and anything football related oh. then recently that you've got? Only in my England mugs, which I've nearly sold all of them now. I I, I just sell RC parts. <laughs> I listened to a few football shows. <laughs> Croatia one actually sold for a full price, which was pretty cool. So I got uh, 60 quid for a Marion Mandzukic shirt. So nice. Oh, I need to get, I've got, I think I said to you when I was around at yours, didn't I, Darren? I've got a bags, literally bags full of the bloody things. Yeah. It's <laughs> something that really isn't, I don't enjoy clothing full stop. I don't really know a great deal about football. <laughs> So I just never do them. But I've Start got... off by ones if they've got names on the back. That's the best thing to do. Yeah, I need to. Sometimes do. that can, you know, that alone will be a good start. If, you know, if you've got, you might you might be lucky and have like a late 90s Cantona Man U shirt or something. You never know. Or a, or a Sheringham Spurs shirt or, you know, a yeah, Newcastle exactly. Shearer shirt. Quite anything you never know. Because I, I put a video, it must be about three years ago, saying, look at all these shirts I've got. I don't even know what these teams are. And everyone told me who they were and the players and this and that. And I didn't list any of them then. And I've picked up loads since. It's terrible. We're getting told off in the chat for it being football and Fortnite chat. And uh, it's one for the lads, apparently. <gasps> oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah, I saw Lex come in and go, football, no, or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we shouldn't what, be talking. What about. should we talk about, chat? Um, potpourri. Potpourri. Or something to it. Underrated. 
<laughs> yeah, if you guys have got any comments or questions, go ahead. Because you know, we we just come because it we did say it was just too hot to think of a topic. Really, it was too hot yeah, to engage my hot. brain and come up with a topic of conversation. And then we we got a couple of other lads in and we ended up talking about games and football. What can I say? So come on, chat. Give us a topic. Well, Lex says she loves pop puree. <laughs> Uh, the, oh, state the state of eBay and no views. Yeah. Yeah, we touched on that. Apparently, they're phasing out the views full stop. Which but eBay, like a, eBay generally is just, at the moment, is just so like. But what? of all the things to think, I know what would be a good idea, but would to be take something useful away from the platform right now. There's so many things they could do. They could be fixing instead yeah. of. Yeah. It's almost like they've turned a glitch into an actual feature. So, well, we've lost all the views anyway. Let's just call it, we're phasing it out. That's what it's like. Let's spin this. We're doing yeah. something positive. We're taking it away on purpose. Yeah, whatever. It's such an old web, not an old, but you're like, it is an old layer website, on layer yeah. on layer. I bet they've gone, look, guys, we just can't fix this. Let's turn it into a feature. Yeah, I mean, some of the pages on eBay still look out of the 90s. Like, you can still find certain pages on eBay that just look like they were they were written in 1999 they really do they don't look any older like and 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 then you've got this new front on top haven't you you've got this new like you've got the the swanky like home page and the seller dashboard but then you find odd pages like when you're trying to like dig through and find something specific like in the settings or something and then suddenly it just looks all janky and you know is it the blocked buyers list or something like that? Which blocked is buyers list. There's, there's loads of other pages that just look messed up. The power seller page. Oh, where, oh. Yeah, the power seller, which doesn't even work fully because they don't offer it, but it's still there and it's still live. But you go to the power seller page, it just looks ancient. Um, yeah, the website is complete, you know. It, it, and I mean, it's I like, I, like the old 60s terrace house that they put yeah. cladding on the front to make yeah. it. Nice. Yeah. And now <laughs> yeah. even that looks awful. Yeah, exactly. And what's that? What's that stuff they used to put on the um on the ceilings in in houses? That um, was... uh, Artex. Artex. Oh God, yeah, yeah, like that. It's just you know. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It is. It is. I think it's it. I mean, I think I don't think you can just blame that for sales though, because if you're having bad sales just look around you even on the tat chat there'll be someone posting about how they're having the best weekend they've ever had um it's it's never it's never just that i mean it's easy to jump to that conclusion and i do as well sometimes that well you know if this is wrong or that's wrong then how do i know my store's getting visibility or not so there is you can always go down that 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 route but it's 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 always working well for someone out there anyway yeah Pivotal yeah. Profit saying eBay need to step step their game up. Um, Paul Mosley there saying some of the help pages look 20 year, years old, like you were saying. And then uh, Heather says, all fur coat and no knickers, as my nan would say. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. That's what they are. I guess it's almost, I mean, the, the size of the platform itself, it, it's, a, it's a dinosaur, isn't it? And they can't overhaul the whole thing. You imagine trying to take that apart and start again when you've got like X amount of million listings running at any given time. So they're yeah, kind of stuck with it, aren't they? Yeah. Like, well, well, they, they probably were trying to fix something and that's where it cost, cost them. I mean, you think of how many hundreds of millions of photographs they've probably lost, for, for example. the photo. I mean, I know a lot of people talk about the views, but for me, the photos was quite a big issue because I was just thinking like only a few hundred of mine got affected. But imagine if you had one of those huge stores, you know, that kind of store that Ken's aspiring to get, like, you know, when people have like a hundred thousand plus listings, right? And and even if you were just to take out like a small percentage of those, and there's lots of stores on eBay with a hundred thousand plus listings, they must have lost hundreds of millions of photographs just like that. Yeah. You know, and they probably were trying to fix something important for for that to have happened. I mean, yeah, it's probably some intern or something pressing the wrong button. Yeah. Don't press that button. Oh, yeah. it's, it's like that woman in the NHS. It was just like last year who managed to email every single one of everybody. Everybody in the NHS has emailed the same email because she pressed the wrong button and it caused yeah. chaos. The thing is, like. <laughs> 
I mean, in the past, I've looked at like, you know, webs, you know, like web developing and stuff, you know, when people, I, I like watching all kinds of weird videos and I like watching people like talk about web developing and what it takes to write a website. And you look at the amount of code it would just take just to, to do something as simple as a, a nice little title with a graphic and a, and a picture. And then you start to realize, wow, how much code there is on every single page on eBay. It is bonkers i mean like you have to write all this code just to let people press on a tab like you know when you go on a website and you press on a tab and it takes you to another page and it loads up and it takes so much to do all, all that and then you, you then you kind of extrapolate in your head like what there must look like it's just you know it's it is mind-boggling yeah and then imagine trying to unpick that yeah going that into all that or... gobbledygook to pick out the offending uh, lines or darren you've got a bit of a background in sort of web design and stuff haven't you or am i, or am yeah. I wrong yeah I, I did have it's what i used to do before i was a reseller and and Z's absolutely right i mean just one comma in the wrong place or one dot can throw an entire website down um out of all of that code and there can be millions of line of code with ebay um, I'd hate to check out that card. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you think about it, our livelihoods are dependent on that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's like trying to fix the engine on a plane while it's flying. It's just... Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's, that's exactly... That's a good hard. analogy, that is. That's, yeah, it is. It's crazy. It must be so... I mean, I was just thinking somebody could easily sabotage a website like that from the inside you know what i mean if, oh, yeah. if code is that easy to mess up by putting a few extra dots and commas in imagine if somebody wanted from the inside to really mess things up they could oh, easily. surely would be so easy i yeah. suppose they back everything up but then again you could switch off a few things and well even hackers are you know from an outside imagine if there was something like that it it would affect you know hundreds of thousands of well maybe more people really so sorry i'm sorry i'm just talking to andrew go on okay uh claire king says they don't write code anymore they have programs for that says claire um yeah, I'm, I, I guess so. But originally, when the website was first designed, I'm guessing you know it would have been someone you know or a team sat there writing it because it's a big website, isn't it? Um, that's why eBay don't change the website. Job would be huge as Larry and Sydney says the problem with eBay is they've continually bandaged their site rather than step step back and looked at it from afar. And um, um, out. Kowloon Attic says prof sales stated 27 million listings were uh, affected according to the eBay rep. That's actually, I don't know if that's actually that many in the scheme of things. I mean, they must have, but it's a lot of listings still. Was, was that just Ken? <laughs> that was just Ken, <laughs> yeah. Was crazy. Uh, Pete's asking if I'm having cider tonight. I haven't got anything in, so probably not. Um, Mr. Sadie one two three has a comment. They are dumbing it down, uh, where the experienced seller is losing their edge. Very frustrating when your knowledge and experience is less of a factor. Reminds me of Amazon. It's it's felt like it's been going that way for a time. They're kind of making everything generic with the whole you know barcodes and all of this, and making it I don't know. But then again, in saying that mentioning ken again if you do have those unique items it's still the best place in the world to sell them if you want an international audience but if you're yeah. selling the more standard barcoded generic stuff like a lot of stuff i do they're they're making that a little bit harder in some ways because you have to compete directly with everyone else yeah i was talking about that the other day with someone who does antique fairs and stuff and it's like if for example ken came off ebay i mean what would he do? You know, antique fairs, I suppose, that sort of thing. It is the number one place to reach those niche buyers who... Yeah. Exactly. Um, oh, and um, Sydney was saying that it, you couldn't just mess the website up because um, it goes through release approvals. Um, if needed, they would just roll back. So there, are, there are obviously, yeah, there, as you'd expect, there will be some safeguards. It's not as simple as like, you know, some guy yeah. just, just 
just you know, like but in my head it almost oh, is like comma in there yeah, yeah, <laughs> can i just set my mind working when, when yeah. dan was saying you know how fragile a web page is with a comma here and there but it does make sense that they'll of course have something in place to back it up and, and well, i'm saying that edward snowden got away with a lot didn't he so. yeah and sydney says no they definitely have programmers as well so yeah might just be some guy caught on f4 and <laughs> yeah, or F4, yeah. <laughs> uh, there we go. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, a lot of people got also kind of talking about the workings of it. I mean, it's not often we stop to think about the workings of it, is it? It's like we just expect... We just know, get annoyed when it We expect it, it to work. work. And yeah, we expect it to just work like magic. And then when it doesn't work or it doesn't do exactly what we want, we get annoyed. But it's kind of a bit humbling to to sit back and like respect like our livelihoods our incomes are really really at, in the hands of of the, of these guys it's not in the hands of the customers as much as it is in the hands of people that know how to keep a website running i mean because you know that's because without the website there are no customers yeah and i think that's why it's so important to work with as many marketplaces as possible as well because like you said if ebay suddenly just stopped i mean the livelihood of a lot of people would stop as well you know so at least if you it may not be you know the complete income that you normally get but at least if you've got a bit in amazon or spock or local boot sales this can keep things ticking over a little bit you know yeah Joan says, hey, we are the customers, so we should not have to worry about how the damn thing works. Yeah, I mean, you're paying you're paying to to sell on there. So you're right to, to that level that you shouldn't have to think about it. But it does sometimes pay to think about it because, you know, that, you know, sometimes like, for example, when people buy a new car and they just run it into the ground and then they're surprised when it doesn't work and you take it to the to the, the mechanics. And, you know, the first thing they say is like, you know, did you ever check this? Did you ever check that? That the, there is a certain level of implied responsibility, or, you know, that you've got to take on board. That when you're doing this, like if you are going to be selling on eBay as your main income, great, but do it with open eyes and and you know, be aware. And and, and all you guys are. That's why we talk about it so often. You know, what would you do if it, you know, if for whatever reason you couldn't sell on eBay anymore? I mean, um, you know, how many times have we seen? people post that they've had Vero warnings for things they didn't know. Yeah. All it takes is for you to get a couple of those, even when you don't mean for them to happen, you get a couple of those in a row, you're off. You know, don't don't think it's a minor. That's not a small thing. You just need to have a number of them within a certain space of time. You're done. And and, and believe me, it can happen on the most mundane things. Like I think people have been done for using the word Velcro. Um, I got something taken down for using uh, like um, Mountain Dew in the title. Um, somebody on the chat chat, I think, put in today or yesterday or whenever that they they got done for using Nike and Puma in the same title. I think oh, for keyword stuff. And they they got, a, I think they got a ban or they got yeah. last warning or something. Yeah. And I yeah. swear that I'm hearing that more and more. I think the whole Vero thing is is being implemented a lot more. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's not just, you, you, there are so many factors to think about, um, not just, you know, um, you know, get, getting the right stuff in front of the right people is, is, is such an important part of it. It is just one part of it. Most of the time I, I'm guilty of just taking the tech for granted and there's nothing mm -hmm. that gets me to rage quicker than tech not working. Last night I was trying to get my phone to talk to our new Apple laptop and they wouldn't talk to each other. And I, w I went from naught to rage in about two minutes. And Andrew had to come in and calm me down and take it away before I threw it out the window. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I expect tech and websites and all that to work. And when it doesn't, it, yeah, it's, I'm lost and I, I just go straight to. But it's, it's a good thing right. to think about, though, though, because it, you know, it is that. It, 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 they are that important aren't they they're that vital i mean you know like look what happens when sometimes the um banking apps have outages or you know you get those odd occasions where suddenly certain banks cash machines won't spit out money anymore and people lose their minds it's like well that visa thing was it a few weeks back when on a friday it was last payday oh, for people yeah when it yeah, people were losing their minds. I, I well, you know, you've got a mortgage day. payment to pay. You've got a rent payment to make. 
you know the the landlord or the the the, the mortgage provider don't care that you, you know visa were were having issues they're going to just see it as a late payment I was in Asda and it was like, a, you know, the apocalypse had come or something. People were just like freaking out. They were like, yeah, yeah. get over I'm yourself. Feed my children. Ah. Yeah. Well, yeah. One, yeah, I mean, and I have to like manually start writing out receipts and things and, oh gosh. Yeah. But I mean, like both me and Nick have experienced with this is with Amazon though, just all of a sudden, can't sell it. Just before, in your case, just before Christmas, it's mm. like, it's like someone pulling the rug out underneath you, like, uh, what do we do now? Kind of thing. So Yeah. Well, definitely. I mean that that was pure panic because also that year was when I was really gonna push Amazon and I I purposefully invested a lot of money in RA stock and waited and sent it up. And then yeah, December the eighth. No, you can't sell on Amazon. You your account's restricted until you can prove your prove business this. status, which yeah. we'd already proved. Yeah. But they can ask you to prove it at any point. I mean, just um, here's another example. Like, I take it for granted now that no, no matter what money's in my PayPal account, as soon as I transfer it to my bank account, it's going to be into my bank account within. It says under two hours normally. It says a little message. It'll be with you within two hours, and it's normally there within seconds, right? So over time, I've grown accustomed. I've become used to dependent to the point where. I'm transferring money for things I need to pay on the day that they're due, right? Now, imagine if what I needed to pay was um, like a, a rent payment or a council tax payment or a bill or something I needed to pay. And then suddenly PayPal, it's, the message says, we'll do it within three to five working days. And that's happened in the past. Um, and, you know, it, that message actually came up on my phone the other day. And I was like, oh, my God, that's not good. But luckily, I checked and it had done it. But at any point, that can happen to you. And you've got no control over it. And you've signed and agreed to the terms of service with PayPal, which states that if they feel that there's any reason whatsoever to to take extra time to to transfer your money you've signed up to that so you could have lots of money in your paypal account transfer it you know for a specific reason you know you might have a holiday to deposit to pay for whatever bam uh yeah three to five days yeah. You're, you're, yeah i was gonna say there was a post something similar to that i remember seeing i can't remember it was in the uk selling group or the tap chat where it was a person that they'd set up a thing so paypal as soon as any money went into there it automatically got transferred out i've no idea how you do that but so there wasn't that kind of but even that doesn't stop it really because all it takes from paypal is to say because it it's not that the money won't go out the the your your transaction as it were goes through paypal don't refuse your transaction they said yeah okay sure we'll transfer your money out it's but they just change they can change they how long time. it takes yeah, yeah. um so I, Talking about all of these issues, with potential issues uh, with eBay and Amazon, etc. Uh, they say it makes you feel almost not self-employed. We still have a boss. You're not. That you, I, this is a really good point as well because there's a really cool chart you can find um, online about like how people earn money, right? And it's got four quadrants. On the left-hand side, you've got employed people and self-employed people and on the right hand side you've got something like business owners and investors right and what we are is like as self-employed people we own our job that's like that's how it's put across to you you just own your job um that's all it is you're, you're not you know self-employed is is what we are definitely that is the it's perfect um but we just own our job that's all it is you know we still are heavily reliant on a lot of other factors um you're not at the end of the day the only way you're not relying on other factors if you're pretty much producing money out of thin air or something do you know what i mean like no, no matter what yeah. what you do you have to rely on on wherever your source of income is coming from like we you either rely on your customers or the platform you're selling on or you know trees to drop leaves if you're a leaf sweeper up you know what i mean you're relying on something to happen so yeah unless you've got a money printing machine you're right Mm. Uh, haven't you got one of them, Darren? It's wearing your grounds. I think it's still in your shed. Isn't it? Uh, uh, it's it's you knows what I'm talking about? The cash flow quadrant. That's it. Yeah. That like where you know how 
you know, like wealth is who owns most wealth, etc. And it tends to be business owners and investors rather than self-employed people or employed people. Mr. Sadi123 uh, goes on to say, a lot of people always talk about diversify. However, I bet very few are actually prepared yeah, very for true. major issues. Um, he says, I know I'm guilty of it myself. Yeah, very true. We do take things for granted and, and, you know, we're all so busy. Doing Say it. But, well. Yeah, don't. What well, you know? What yeah. diversifying is not an easy thing to do because no. you know anything you want to diversify into takes money. Like the other day, I was thinking, oh, why don't I do more Amazon? And I'm like, well, even if like I know I can source products for twenty odd quid and sell them for a hundred plus, right? So that's good profit, correct? And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be great if I could just send a hundred of those items up? And then I thought to myself. I haven't got two grand, <laughs> you know, and there's the end of that. It's a simple, it's literally as simple as that. It's literally as simple as that to start another source of income. You need to either have some cash available or access to, to some cash. And that's just a hundred puny items. I just wanted to send, I, cause I don't even have a hundred items up at Amazon. I thought if I just had a hundred items up there, I could make some really good money. I, c I can't afford a hundred items. <laughs> you know, It's simple as that. Yeah. It's also to hear that, like, if you say, like, this piece of paper is your time, no matter how you fold it, you've only got that amount of time. So you're going to take time away from something else and mm. spread yourself too thin if you're not careful. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Completely. Yeah. I mean, we talked about this, I think, in one of these chats before, you know, when, when the whole merch thing took off and we were all inspired to jump on merch, you remember? But then it's... <laughs> It's less about time and more about focus for me. I struggle to really give energy and focus to other things because it detracts instantly from the other things that I need to keep juggling over here. You know what I mean? And I just, I've ended up pretty much dropping merch. Have, have, yeah. I know, Zaheer, you had a go, and Tom, did you have a yeah, go at merch? Dead, down at I don't think I've made it to 10 shirts. I think oh, I gave yeah. up before getting to 10 shirts. I think I sold about 15, 20 shirts so far over six months though it you know i've I've made like i don't know about 20 quid or something it, it's just pitiful and i've spent way more on the software for designing the blinking shirts and i'm on tier 100 so i could put 100 designs up but i just I can't be asked what about you Darren? <laughs> yeah I, i've sold two shirts on there in about the same period as tom actually probably longer because i think i was approved before you wasn't i I've yeah. got two shirts in about a year, so it's going well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah and Sid, Sib says that's just investment, Z. That's exactly, that's just investment. And Ka Karen says, people think I'm making lots of money now, but I invest most of it back into the business. Um, when I say people, I mean family. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's the, the other side of it. it. You know, it's, you know, it can look, re it can look very misleading, can't it? um when 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 you just if people are just seeing one side of it, if they're just seeing sales you know they're not seeing the full yeah. story joan glenn martin says even if you sell at fairs and antique centers you are still reliant on those business owners doing their thing yeah and you could have the rug pulled out from you my my first little business i set up was a, a second-hand record store within like a what used to be a big shop and they divided it up into little mini like to kind of little kickstarter places you know where a small business can start so i had one of these little units and um we were all happily paying our rent we didn't know the person owning that we were paying our rent to wasn't paying the landlord so one day we turned up and all the locks had been changed and we couldn't even get in so we were completely mm -hmm. just had the rug pulled out from under us because we were reliant on somebody else to do their part and they weren't they just ran off with all our money but I think that's precisely the point as well, though, isn't it? The fact that whatever you do, like you said, you're going to be relying on some other, you know, form, some other structure, aren't you? You're going to be relying on someone or something. Yeah. And that's the whole point of diversifying is because you are always going to be relying on someone. It's best to have multiple things rather than one thing. You know, and I, I and I'd agree about the um, the time aspect that Tom brought up. Um, you know, there time, money, space. These are all finite. You know, for a lot of us, um, not many people have got you know infinite of any of those, especially time. Um, if you do, you're very special and gifted. Um, 
you know, but like, I, I just feel that it, it is because of that very reason that you're always relying on someone to some extent, you know, whichever side of the quadrant you are, like, even if you're an investor, you're still, you know, reliant on electronics to make sure you've got access to your investments and money or whatever um you know even if you're a trader you still need access to a platform to allow you to execute your trades in the right time and that can cause you so you don't just rely on on one thing and i you know i say it as if i'm doing it and i'm not and i feel like a plum so <laughs> there we go i think the worst is when you you have the knowledge and that you know you're missing out on this stuff and you're it's not doing it though, isn't it yeah. it's that you know you could do it but you're not doing it. I think I'd rather not know and be in. But it's a it's a case of should though. Like Tom, like if I was in your situation, it would scare me. Like I'm scared enough as it is, but it would scare me. Well, having this raw talent is a scary thing. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> it's, it's a responsibility as well. Exactly. It's you know on a serious note, like with the amount of inventory you've got up there, for example, that would just bother me. You know, but you, but you like you like well, same as me though. I mean, I've got so much time and energy and in, invested now in in eBay. Um, you know, if if suddenly I wasn't able to sell it, I'd then be left with like five thousand RC parts. And where am I going to sell those at that kind of profit? You saw that though with the fidget spinners. You know, when people like went all in mm. importing fidget spinners. And then it just fizzled out, and then the people are like, "Ah, I spent my life savings on fidget spinners. What am I gonna do?" So. Man, that's a sad story to tell. <laughs> yeah, that is a sad story to tell. Yeah. So we we've actually been um, prattling on for for almost an hour. Um, so before we go, um, what have you got coming up, Darren? Have you got any plans beyond uh, selling all these CDs? No, I'm going to be seeing CDs for quite a while. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> how's how's things going with Phoebe's clothing? It's going really well. Yeah, it's going really well. She's uh, actually doing a lot more with Amazon as well now, uh, which is going really, really well. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to get my own Amazon shipment up very soon. Um, so hopefully we'll both be getting a lot of Amazon sales in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, oh, that's nice. really well. So the clothing is going on Amazon, you mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it's doing really well. Nice. Well, she does new, doesn't she? So you can. Mm. Yeah, purely. Yeah, yeah, new is yeah, new is different. So. What about yourself, Tom? What are your plans for the near future? I don't know. I'm thinking about getting into loom bands because I've heard they're popular. <laughs> uh, yeah, you might have a deal in the chat there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just seen in the chat. Yeah, that um, will he take less? Is selling some loom bands. So I'm thinking it may be the next hot thing. No, but, no. Or by job like that. of that magnetic stuff that you can't sell on eBay. Oh uh, yeah, that kids were eating and it was sticking yeah, yeah. together in the stomachs. Yeah. yeah, I've actually got some of that <laughs> somewhere kicking around. I remember I bought one. I remember when um, when the loom band thing collapsed as quick as fidget spinners did. There were numbers floating around of how many billion of those little elastic bands were sat around in warehouses. Most of which will still be there because nobody can sell it. And then they'll perish if they're elastic. They'll just be put in landfill eventually yeah over time they just become they won't even have any function will they was it the same around your way while that craze and for about six months after that craze there was always a couple of stalls at boot sales just covered in loom band. yeah <laughs> loom bands yeah it's a box full now isn't it's now uh vaping and um the fidget spinners still but loads of vaping uh, fidget spinners are, do are gone now fidget yeah. spinner stalls aren't a thing now not not full on stalls anymore, but there were yeah last year there was like make any serious money on that you have to be just ahead of the curve on it don't you you have to import sell it off quick and then get out. Blitz says I'm surprised the yo yo trend hasn't come round again yet. If it does, I'm getting a yo yo. I oh, love yo yos. Yo yos are like just so cool. Yeah, I've still it. got my ones from the nineties. So I, yeah. yo yos oh. are just epic. Have you did you see one of the streams I did where I was looking up yo yos, Tom? You'd be amazed. Have you got any of the Coke ones? Uh, yes, I have actually. Yeah, oh, they're worth good money, especially yeah. if you've got the gold one. You know, the gold, um, the gold edition that used to have to send off a ton of stuff for. Do you know what made yo-yos cool for me? What? R Richard Pryor in Superman 3. Oh, yeah. That, for me, sealed the deal. When I saw him and he was... Oh, that was it. I wanted to do what that guy was doing. 
I, don't know. Cool. I, I like the the ones with the bearings in where they're, yeah, they're, we spin. On the, uh, they're the best ones. Yeah. I remember the light up ones as well. Do you remember them from the 80s? They used to light up. Yeah, I used to have that and then the poi stuff, which is like a, a like a blob on on a string with a thing where you sort of did all that business. And then it was it called a, di a Diablo or something where it's two oh, sticks yeah. and string, that thing, and you do that and then you throw it up in the air. Yeah, I was big into juggling for a while. In, in the early 90s, I was into my juggling. <laughs> well, you're a lefty. Are you a lefty? No. Ah. No. Lefties are supposed to be good at juggling, so. Oh, okay. So what about yourself, So here? What are your plans for the near future? Uh, nothing, really. It's just, um, Fortnite. I can't. Oh, yeah. RC parts. Yeah, just, I'll probably buy some more RC parts and, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I just don't. I'm, you know what? I sold, um like i sold like some electronics recently and i'll share them on, on our channel when i do some videos or whatever i kind of regret it now i'm like yeah the money's good but the packaging just i'm done with it if it doesn't go in like a large letter i don't want to know <laughs> you've been spoiled by these completely well. completely <laughs> completely well because you know what I, I i sold that that alarm clock right you know the one i bought i had to take a refund on that and i that it's a minor but still i was just like i had to wrap that and and you know put it in the cardboard box and bubble wrap and all this stuff that i haven't had to do for ages and then it comes back to me you know whereas at least with an rc part even if they send it back to you it's just you know it's yeah. just an envelope <laughs> totally how yeah, about you nick um I, I can't think beyond holiday. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff listed and sorted um, before we go. But yeah, I'll, I'll have a think what we're up to when we get back. Joan says, Z, same with knitting machines. Wow, knitting machines would be a hell of a, yeah. I've shipped okay. I've, I've shipped a couple and I'm like, the money was good, but I, yeah, they're just too awkward for me now. Oh, wow. Still. Billy Bryan says, there used to be a yo-yo factory in Bedford when I was a kid. We used to go to the skips and get loads for free. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. You could have taken them to school and sold them off to all your mates and made yeah. a bit of money. I love skips. <laughs> <laughs> I think that should just end there. Just with, I yeah. love skips. <laughs> On that note, I love skips. Both the crisps and the physical things. Well, I've not had the crisps in a while. You know. Oh, I like them. Yeah, they're good. Oh, That's just oh, reminded oh, me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No, but the skips used to kind of like almost melt, didn't melt they? Your mouth, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. are so small as well. I mean, one yeah. isn't enough. I'll tell you what, Monster Munch is still doing respectable bags if you buy the flaming hot flavor. But you know, the pound bags, they're about the size of what a normal bag used to be back in the day. Family so, bag. Yeah. yeah, family it's bag. You have, bag. To eat, you have to eat a family bag now for it to resemble. Yeah, so here. <laughs> yeah, but it's like. That for me is what a bag of crisps was like before. Yeah, but that's because you were smaller in the eighties or nineties. <laughs> you know, I, I normally have to eat a pound bag. Sorry, guys, I can't be eating. Yeah, you know, just a well, pound bag. On that note, <laughs> and on that bombshell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that worked really well. We were discussing that maybe um, the, the tat chat. We're going to start opening it up and make it more of a social thing. We might invite, you know people in if they want to come in more like this as a format because as Zaheer and I were saying before we went live we've been struggling for content and, and things to talk about for a while so yeah I mean if yeah. this format works and if there's any other YouTubers that want to be part of this kind of a revolving kind of social Tuesday chat then uh, yeah drop us a line let us know I think that's a good idea definitely it just means it would it will make it makes it because everyone brings something different don't they so it's like when it's the same two guys every Every yeah, week. I, I think we've kind of exhausted we've that. Exhausted. Can we say we did a good 120 odd shows? Yeah, or something. Good, good run. That's a good run. So we're not going to go anywhere, but we're thinking we will, you know, try and yeah. get more people involved, yeah. more guests yeah. as a regular kind yeah. of evolving panel of people. Because I was saying I, I joined in with the six pack guys over in America on Sunday, and I really love that format. Everyone is so different, everyone's got something different to offer. And I think that's what's been lacking from this. So, yeah, let us let's know if you're watching this afterwards uh, in the comments if you like that plan. We'll be back next week uh, on Zaheer's channel for yep. Tat Chat 100 and God knows what. And uh, <laughs> until then, I'll just say thank you to Darren, Tom and Zaheer for joining me. I appreciate that, guys. Yeah. No worries, dude. Uh, Super. Thanks for all your comments. I know we were terrible with keeping up in the chat.
and uh, good luck to England. Yeah, enjoy the match, guys. Fingers I'm crossed. Gonna enjoy it. It should be good. See you guys. Easy. See you later. Oh, hold on. Can't find the off button. There we go.